places where, where really I became freed in, a, in the most powerful, deep way of my sexuality and spirituality. Um, what a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing to be in a church where we can share and talk about such things. Is that amazing or what? All of our churches, sacred space, you know, think about the spaces where you first found MCC, where you first came into your wholeness as a sexual and spiritual being. You know, I think about that, about what it has meant in so many of our churches and how um, sometimes those humble places evoke powerful and amazing memory, amazing memory for us. Um, number two, there are solitary spaces, solitary places. Jacob was running away from a very dysfunctional family, <laughs> from a brother who wanted to kill him, from a father who felt betrayed, a mother who conspired. And he went off to a solitary place. He thought perhaps running away from God and instead ran smack into God <laughs> in a new way. You know, surely the presence of God is in this place and I didn't know it, says Jacob. This is truly the gate of heaven. It's the house of God. Uh, you know, we live in a time where it is practically impossible sometimes for us to be alone or solitary. We are so connected that sometimes uh, we know we need to disconnect. And we need to be a countercultural place. And we need to find those places, pastors, you know. Uh, your preaching's gonna wither you don't have some solitary place to wrestle <laughs> with God. Lay leaders, you know, all of us, uh, to be a person of faith, we have to have that space to wrestle with God. The place where heaven and earth touch, all of us need that. Celtic spirituality uh, calls people a lot to come aside to come to a place of refreshing, to learn to be with ourselves and with the angels who will minister to us and who will bless us and touch us. Last but not least, there are the incarnational and the place, the active place of the spiritual life. I love the gospel reading today. It's Jesus' first sermon. I love the way Jesus was in trouble from the very first sermon he preached. <laughs> I love that about Jesus. You know, he didn't start out weakly. He didn't start out cautiously. He went right to the heart of things. He said, you know, this passage in Isaiah talks about good news being preached to the poor, freedom to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, good news for the poor and oppressed. You know that today, this day, in this very place, that scripture is coming true. From that moment, his, his fate was sealed. From that moment forward, they were out to get him because he was treading, <laughs> treading, treading on, on very thin ice there and talking about himself as that incarnation of that amazing prophetic witness. I love it. It's always spoken to me that Jesus identified himself in his ministry from day one with very concrete justice seeking change history and change the world kind of ministry and message. This was not just something about the head or, or about the heart. It was about the least of these. From the very beginning, Jesus reached past stereotypes and, and everything to the greatest human need that existed. I believe that in our day, MCC is certainly one of those places where the gospel that Jesus took a risk to preach, gave his life to embody, is being fulfilled in your hearing, in your churches, in your community. Imagine that you live still in that first generation of an amazing movement that, had, that is grandiose enough 
to think we can challenge the church as it has become mm -hmm. in our world. Isn't that an amazing thing? What a grandiose vision. What, what are we thinking that we believe we could be this in the world? But, but I believe we're heirs of that promise and of that first sermon that Jesus mm -hmm. preached. And you can never stop preaching that sermon uh, for 2,000 years and more. I had an experience two years ago at Easter. I was invited by the White House to the Easter prayer breakfast. And um, that was very exciting. My first time ever to be at a White House Easter prayer breakfast with the President of the United States. Um, they were, it got me late a bit, and it was on tell CNN, or somebody was, or C SPAN was uh, filming it. All of us milling about in this room for two hours waiting for the president to, to come. And none of us realized that C-SPAN was filming it. So you can see me sitting at the table texting Paula. <laughs> As she texts back, you're on C-SPAN. <laughs> um, they had a little picture of me saying hi to Joel Osteen and his uh, wife. That was fun. <laughs> But then we got to sit at our place, and there were little place cards there, you know, the White House and your name. And sitting next to me was the ambassador from the Vatican, <laughs> which, which I think was some White House staffer's fun that morning, uh, doing that. He was fine. He didn't know what MCC was before he sat down, but now he does. <laughs> our picture taken together with the president. <laughs> it's kind of funny. That's just kind of great. And uh, the president was very gracious. And, um, you know, I was a little bit, you know, I was, whoa, you know, thank you, Mr. President. And, and he was introduced, told who I was. And uh, he took his time that day to greet every single person, about 80 of us. Uh, it was a very powerful moment. But, you know, when I think about that, uh, something else happened in a 24 hour period. I went to Washington to the White House, and the next morning I flew to Jamaica, to Montego Bay. And I said, what a life I lead. I'm going to Jamaica. Uh, not for vacation, but for the very first March on Tolerance in Jamaica. And there was Reverend Robert Griffin, and Reverend Michael Diaz, and Reverend Pat Baumgartner, and myself, waiting in our hotel uh, for them to come and get us to help lead this march, the very first March for Tolerance for people with AIDS, sex workers and LGBT people. Uh, something that couldn't happen in our country in the same way. Uh, people who all of whom experience oppression around sexual and, and, and uh, sexual minority issues. And so there we were, we're supposed to take off at 11 and by 12 o'clock they still haven't come and finally 12.30 they come and pick us up to take us to the march. And um, this is in Montego Bay, by the way, where just three years before this, um, a young man who was thought to be gay was pushed by a mob into the sea and drowned. He was one of dozens and dozens of gay activists and leaders and people who were killed or murdered in different kinds of ways. And so here we are with our little MCC group and uh, people, HIV AIDS and sex workers and LGBT people all gonna march down the main street of Montego Bay. And as we get in the car, he said, well, we have 12 people. <laughs> Where's the advance team? Nobody told us this. <laughs> we get there, there were 50 people by the time we got there, and when we finally stepped off at about 1 o'clock, there were 110 people, led by a band of teenagers who either themselves were HIV positive or whose parents had died of HIV, and they had the um, best looking uniforms and the worst looking instruments you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> But they led us down the main street of Montego Bay. 110 of us followed them. Biggest rainbow flag you've ever seen in your life. Although, for the most part, people felt like it was most acceptable to be a person with AIDS, then a sex worker, and then a gay person. So a very tall young queen, big, big, big guy, sat next to me and he said, do you think they'll think I'm a sex worker? <laughs> MCC walking down in our collars in the midst of this group and all of the gay people had on masks and on surgical masks you know till halfway through the parade and the band called you know people were dancing on the sidelines until they kind of what is this <laughs> um, and uh, halfway through these kids took off their masks 
and again handing out flyers and, and uh, coming out and talking to people. And we passed by at least 100,000 people that day. Not one violent action. Uh, I'm not saying there weren't any bad comments at all, but not bad. And you know, we marched right to that place by the sea that that young man was drowned and, and held a rally, had a press conference. People for the first time in their lives were on TV in Jamaica. It was an amazing, powerful day. And as fun as and exciting the, as the White House was, and fun as it was kind of pulling the chain of the ambassador from the Vatican, <laughs> uh, I have to say that little parade in Montego Bay me was what I live and breathe and what I believe we were born to do. You know, lots of people are going to go to the White House. Nothing wrong with that. I'm privileged to have that experience, but it can't compare. It can't compare to walking down the street and people seeing ministers, clergy, people from MCC and saying, okay, there is a church somewhere. There is a faith somewhere that loves me. And so I say to you today, I pray for you that you will have blessed memories of your thin and holy places in your life, that you will have solitary spaces to wrestle with God about your calling and your future, and places where we will cooperate together with God's redeeming activity. Now, one of my favorite Irish blessings is May you be dead half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. May you be in heaven half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. I messed it up. May you be in heaven half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. And I you pray that for me. Um, I like that image. But here, uh, a Celtic blessing for us today. The love, and, the love and affection of heaven be to you. The love and affection of saints be to you. The love and affection of angels be to you. The love and affection of the sun be to you. The love and affection of the moon be to you. Each day and each night of your lives to keep you from haters, to keep you from harmers, to keep you from oppression. The shape of Christ be towards us. The shape of Christ be to us. The shape of Christ before us. The shape of Christ behind us. The shape of Christ be over us. The shape of Christ be under us. The shape of Christ be with us. The shape of Christ be around us from Monday to Sunday, and Sunday to Monday, the shape of Christ be all around us. Amen. Amen.